Hi, I'm Deb Cuddle, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. It looks like this will be a very good season for recreational crabbing on Puget Sound. This trend will continue thanks to good resource management by our specialists and good conservation practices by our public. Here are some good tips to review or to get you started. Well, today we're out on a Department of Fish and Wildlife test fishery vessel in Puget Sound doing a preseason test fishery for Dungeness crab. And we're testing for relative abundance of crab in the area throughout Puget Sound, looking at what kind of catches we're getting per pot, and also testing to see what percentage of the crab are in their hard shell stage and ready to harvest. By the looks of our catches that we're seeing today, it looks like the season's going to be a good one, and as long as people continue to follow the fishing regulations and rules, we should continue to see uh, productive crab seasons throughout Puget Sound in the future. So to identify a male and female Dungeness crab, you look at the underside of the crab and you focus in on this abdominal flap. And the abdominal flap on a female crab will be twice as wide or more than on a male crab. So as you can see on these two crab here, the bottom one is a female crab with a very wide abdominal flap and the top one is a male with a very narrow and pointed abdominal flap. This is a male Dungeness crab, as you can see by the narrow abdominal flap. Now we need to measure it to see if it's legal size. To measure a crab, you measure just inside the last spines on the Dungeness crab. And you use a, a, a gauge that you can purchase at any sport dealer, and the, the, it has to at least touch inside the caliper on the gauge. And as you can see, this crab is too small, so it must be returned to the water. This is another male Dungeness crab, and we'll measure it to see if it reaches the six and a quarter inches, and it does. It's larger than six and a quarter inches. So we'll keep that one, put it in our cooler, and record it on our catch record card. To identify a soft shell crab, you want to turn them over and test the shell for softness in two different locations. The first one is on the shell underneath the claw. You want to pinch like you're squeezing a peanut shell, and there should be little to no flex in that shell if it's a good hard shell crab. This one has quite a bit of flex in it, and I'm going to say that's a soft shell crab. The second place you want to check is on the first walking leg, and you want to squeeze right here, and again, that's pretty, pretty flexible, pretty soft crab. And it's illegal to retain soft shell crab, so this one's going to go back to the water. The way to return crab to the water unharmed is you don't throw them off the side of the boat or the pier. You gently lower them down to the water's edge and release them, like so. This is a large male Dungeness crab that would be most likely kept by a recreational fisher. And if the crab is kept, all crab kept in Puget Sound must be recorded on a catch record card, and those catch record cards must be returned to the department. The biologists that manage this fishery use that catch card information to manage the fishery and assure that there's going to be a sustainable resource for the future. Bring together the Department of Fish and Wildlife, active community groups, and some kids and you've got the ingredients for a kids fishing tournament, just like a recent event in Ellensburg. The Kittitas County Field and Stream Club's been around since 1919 in the state of Washington, and we have a long-standing history of, of working with the Department of Fish and Wildlife in, in maintaining access sites 
And with all Washington agencies, they're under constraints, whether it's budget or personnel-wise. And we are doing our part to ensure that access sites and fishing areas remain open. And we're uh, just stepping in as a community to uh, keep them clean and to uh, foster that relationship with the department. We believe that keeping these access sites open and clean is an important thing for the community and we have stepped up and we've taken over the stewardship for Fiorito Lakes and for Mattoon Lake here in the Owensburg area. As a friend of mine likes to say, Kittitas County's here in paradise and I have to agree and we have some blue ribbon trout streams but not everybody has the resources or the funding to be able to do that type of fishing. Here at Fiorito in Mattoon, any family with minimal amount of money can come out and enjoy an afternoon of fishing and it's, it's, it's just a great place. You don't need any type of heavy gear or anything, just a basic fishing pole and just come on out and have fun. The Ellensburg community is a great community and we get a lot of support from the businesses already during our annual banquet and auction. Um, but we're always looking for volunteers that want to come out and work with us on, on a monthly basis is about how often we come out and hit these sites uh, to do just a general cleanup and, and, and trim and, and maintain the facility. We're trying to get youth outdoors. That's the big push of the Kittitas County Field and Stream Club. Get people unplugged, get them back outdoors. And uh, four years ago, we started working with the Department of Fish and Wildlife on free fishing weekend. We come out and we offer youth fishing coaches, our field and stream club. So if people have haven't fished before, don't have any experience, they can come out. We have loaner poles available, free bait, and we'll give them instruction. And we're even doing a little basic fly casting instruction this year. So it's just, it's a great thing for all. Uh, we've teamed up last year with the Kiwana, Noon Kiwanis Club and they're hosting a derby at the same time while we're out here this year on free fishing weekend. We're trying to teach the kids not only about fishing but the importance of the environment and, and, and the stewardship, what we're doing. We're trying to be role models and so they see that as well and they'll grow up with understanding that our environment's important and they'll want to take care of it too. The first year we did this, uh, we had a family come out and they had no fishing experience at all and they had bought all brand new poles and their 11 year old daughter won her age group in the fishing derby and she caught her first fish and the smile was just so huge on her face and her family was so proud of her um, and it was at that moment that I knew that we were doing the right thing and, and even if we only affect a few people each year, it's more than worthwhile. Here are some other fishing opportunities across Washington. Every spring, the young students in Lincoln County get a chance to explore shrub step habitat on our Swanson Lakes wildlife area. It's an adventure for the students and for us. My name is Julie Anderson. I'm a wildlife area manager for Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And today we're out at my main wildlife area, the Swanson Lakes wildlife area, out in the middle of Lincoln County, Washington. It's a beautiful day and we have third graders out on a field trip out to the wildlife area to learn a little bit about this part of the world. So we have about 40 kids from the towns of Odessa and Wilbur, and we've already taken them on a little hiking trip into the interior of the wildlife area. They've had the opportunity to track a radio collar off a sharp-tailed grouse. They've also had the opportunity to dig some bulbs that Native Americans would normally dig and taste some plants that are edible, learn about one that is poisonous. And um, this afternoon they're going to be going into our shop and they are going to learn a little bit about um, the activities we're doing for augmenting our sharp-tailed grouse population here on the wildlife area and also the introduction of sage grouse onto the wildlife area those birds, the sage grouse, have been gone for about 20 years and we brought an experimental small population in with radio collars to try to find out, number one, if we actually have any here that we, these 
radio collar birds will lead us to. And number two, find out if these birds may actually start their own little ongoing population. So the kids will see a little video show about that. And then after that, they get a chance to actually touch and try on things like deer hides and antlers. And they actually get to touch um, taxidermy specimens of different birds and different kinds of mammals. And there's even the polar bear pelt out there. We, I don't know where the polar bear pelt came from. I can guarantee you it didn't come from Lincoln County. <laughs> but the kids get a real, um, they get a real fun adventure out there, actually getting their hands on uh, some of these pelts and these skulls, and they get to see that bird bones are hollow. And uh, when we're done with the kids, they all get a poster of the shrub step of Lincoln County, so they get something to remember this area. And these are fairly local kids anyway. Um, they all live within about 30 or 40 miles of the wildlife area. So this is kind of their backyard, and they get to explore their backyard a little bit. And that's what we're doing here today. This is an annual event that we have going on today. Um, it's part of the Lake Roosevelt Forum's Discovery Week, and the goal is to try to bring area school children out to uh, fish and wildlife projects and properties um, out in the part of the world where they live, basically, and get them to connect with nature in the areas where they live. It seems like nowadays kids don't get enough chance to go out into the pucker brush and play kickball or... Uh, any of the games that some of us older people might have played when we were kids and pick up frogs and break the ice in springtime and things like that. So um, I very much like to take them out on a hike where they can go look for all kinds of things. They find stink bugs. They find garter snakes. They don't get to pick the snakes up. Um, they find things like horned lizards. And um, we learn all kinds of different things about adaptations to the world around them. And it's the, basically the natural world that these kids live in. Um, this particular uh, site for Discovery Week, Swanson Lakes, is titled Home on the Range. And so we also like to talk a little bit about what it was like for Native Americans who came through here and hunted here and lived on the land here um, before Western colonization. And we also talk about what life was like, say, for the early settlers out here and, and how difficult things were before they had things like power and they had to have hand dug wells. and. Um, how they survived the winter, and I don't know if we can see, but right off to my left here is an old earth cellar. And the kids get to learn about what you did for refrigeration a hundred years ago, and we talk a little bit about that as well. Here is where you can see some of Washington's wildlife in the coming weeks. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching.